Jai Hind Vande Matram Namaste this is Kunal Mehta from Make Me Scientific and in this video lecture we are going to derive the equation for standing waves. Now these standing waves are produced due to the superposition of two waves. One incident wave that is being produced on a rope. Now that wave hits the fixed end and then there is a phase reversal of pi that means the crest when it hits it becomes the trough and comes back right and then that reflected wave and the incident wave they superpose with one another. So, that standing wave has nodes and antinodes. So, we are going to uh, derive the position of the nodes and antinodes in terms of the length as well as the, uh, the wavelength right. So, first of all quick recap that if there is a transverse wave like this I am only going to consider a small pulse and this is the fixed end right then the equation <coughs> is a sin omega t minus of k x because this wave is traveling in plus x direction right <coughs> a is the amplitude that means this one. Now, after reflection what happens is from the fixed end this becomes something like this the pulse inwards or if you have an entire transverse wave you just need to invert it. Now, it goes in the minus x direction after reflection. So, the equation would be y r that is equal to minus of a sin omega t plus k x or you may also write this as a sin omega t plus k x and then there is an addition of phase pi both are one and the same because sin 180 plus theta is sin theta <coughs> sorry minus of sin theta right that is why. So, over here what we uh, need to do is we are going to interfere both the waves. So, both these waves are going to meet at one particular point. So, over there the net displacement as per the principle of superposition is equal to incident wave plus reflected waves displacement okay, vectorial addition. Now, simply we are going to add these two. So, this is equal to a sin omega t minus k x this is our incident wave I am going to consider this wave. So, plus minus of a sin omega t plus k x right. Now, we are going to pull out a common from here. So, this is a in bracket sin omega t minus k x then this minus comes out this is sin omega t plus of k x. So, we are going to use the identity uh, mathematical identity that is sin c minus sin d right that is equal to 2 sin c minus d by 2 cos c plus d by 2. So, this is a mathematical identity and we are going to use the same over here this is c and this one is d. Okay. So, this will be equal to a then 2 sin c minus d. So, this minus this one. So, that is minus of 2 k x divided by 2 because this omega t will get cancelled and then cos of this plus this. Now, this time k x will get cancelled. So, it will be 2 omega t divided by 2. So, basically what you are getting is the net displacement or the resultant of both the waves is 2 a sin k x cos omega t. Now, this minus is going to come out like this one it is because of the fact that sin of minus theta is equal to minus sin theta. Okay. Now, this itself is the equation of the standing wave. So, this itself is the equation of the standing wave or the stationary waves. Now, we will have to define the terms like nodes, antinodes and so on. So, now if you recall then you know this very well that y is equal to a sin omega t or this equation can be minus a sin omega t or it can be a cos omega t or it can be minus of a cos omega t. So, that means any one of these are the equations of SHM. So, if you compare the above equation with 
this one you will find a very good similarity between this expression and the last expression over here. See the omega t, t term omega t term cos cos function. So, that means the coefficient of the cos omega t is the amplitude. So, that means if I leave this cos omega t term the amplitude is defined by this term. So, I am going to write down the amplitude as a dash that is equal to 2 a this minus sign and minus sign. So, I am leaving it. So, it is 2 a this part is the amplitude 2 a sin k x which means that over here if you look that the amplitude of the SHM a single particle performing SHM its amplitude is constant, but here the amplitude is not constant it depends upon x. This a is the amplitude of the single incident wave or the reflected wave, but this k is 2 pi by lambda lambda is constant pi is constant both the waves have same amplitude same frequency same wavelength, but you look that x is different. So, that means if you have a rope so practically what does it mean is suppose this rope is tied at both the ends that is what we have considered. Now, this is x is equal to 0 and say for example, this point 1 is at a distance x 1 this point 2 is at a distance x 2 this point 3 is at a distance x 3 and similarly, this point 4 is at a distance equal to length. So, here I can write down x is equal to l because l is the length of the rope. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 or whatever it may be all the particles they have different amplitudes. So, that is why nodes are the points which do not oscillate at all they have 0 amplitudes. Anti nodes are those points which oscillates with the largest amplitude. So, depending upon where you are located the distance upon that the amplitude is going to be decided right. So, now we will derive the condition let us write down this one the net amplitude equation once again. So, the amplitude equation is a dash that is equal to 2 a sin k x. Now, I am going to write down two conditions over here nodes and anti nodes. So, we do know that anti nodes are the points in the standing wave which oscillate with maximum amplitude. So, a dash can be maximum if sin of k x is either plus 1 or minus 1. Please do not see this equation as mathematically a upwards or a downwards amplitude is maximum in the upward direction maximum in the downward direction amplitude does not depend upon sign. So, if I say 3 centimeter or minus 3 centimeter anyhow the magnitude is maximum. So, if sign function has its maximum value plus 1 or minus 1 amplitude is going to be the maximum maximum right and sin k x is plus or minus 1 if k x is equal to. So, for that let us remember the sin theta graph this is sin function graph like this this is plus 1 and this is minus 1 sorry this is minus of 1 negative of 1 and this angle is 0 this is pi by 2 this is pi this is 3 pi by 2 uh, this is 2 pi and so on right and then this point is phi pi by 2 and so on. So, sin function has plus 1 value or minus 1 value at what angles pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, phi pi by 2, 7 pi by 2. So, in that way I can also write this as 2 n minus 1 pi by 2 generalizing and I will have to plug in the values of n as not 0. I will tell you why 1, 2, 3 and so on right. So, if I substitute 1 n is equal to 1 over here you will reach here. If I substitute n is equal to 2 you will get this n is equal to 3, 4 you will get the substituent values ok. So, now let us find out that if k x if k x is 2 n minus 1 pi by 2. So, k is 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda times of x that is equal to 2 n minus 1 pi by 2. 
we are deriving the conditions for anti nodes right. So, pi pi gets cancelled. So, that means you have the value of x as 2 n minus 1 lambda by 4. That means, if I substitute the value of n as 1, I will get the position of first anti node. So, x 1 is equal to n 1. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. So, it is lambda by 4 then x 2 the second anti node is at 2 multiplied by 2. So, it is 3 lambda by 4 I will show it diagrammatically and so on right. Okay. Now, let us talk about the conditions of the nodes. Now, the amplitude of the nodes has to be 0 or minimum that is only possible if sin k x takes up 0 value and sin k x is 0 at 0 pi 2 pi and so on. So, that means, I should be writing the angle k x must be equal to uh, it should be 0 or pi or 2 pi in short 3 pi 4 pi or n pi. Now, here you will have to start with n is equal to 0. So, if I substitute here n is equal to 0, I will get the first one n is equal to 1, I will get pi, I will let you know. Okay, please hold on. So, that means, now k x if I substitute the value of k x as 2 pi by lambda times x is equal to n pi 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 gets cancelled x is equal to n lambda by 2. So, the positions of the anti nodes the first anti node the sorry the first node is at n is equal to 0. So, that means, x 1 is 0 then the second node second node is at n is equal to 1. So, that is at lambda by 2 the third node is at 3 lambda by 2 and so on. Okay. Now, let us understand okay, what we have done over here the nodes and anti nodes by looking at the actual picture. Right. So, this is the first harmonic that I am going to show. We do know very well that in standing waves the first harmonic looks something like this. Right. Now, this point is x is equal to 0 which is always a node. So, that means, the first condition x is e x 1 is 0 is being satisfied. For that you will have to uh, substitute the value of n is equal to 0. n has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and n for the anti nodes where while the first node is always at n is equal to 0. Right? 0 then 1, 2, 3 first nodes and like that. Now, look this is half the wave. So, if I call the wavelength of this wave as lambda over here you have anti node over here you have node. So, this is the first node the first anti node and the uh, second node and see this part is one fourth this part I should be better highlighting this one this part is lambda by 4. So, this distance from here to here is the first anti node. So, that is why if I substitute n is equal to 1, I get the first anti node at distance lambda by 4 from the beginning. Now, look I am getting the second node here over here the second node is at lambda by 2. So, that means, we are very correct this distance from here till here oh, I should be highlighting properly distance from here to here is lambda by 2. So, at distance of lambda by 2 from where from the origin this is the origin I am getting the second node. Now, this ends here, but let us extend our understanding with respect to the second harmonic and then I will end up my class over here. So, in the second harmonic you get something like this. Now, let me write down here the first node is at x is equal to 0. Now, this point is at a distance lambda by 4. So, I am getting the first anti node a 1 this is the second node n 2 I am going to call this as node n 1 and look this distance is lambda by 2 and then this distance is anti node the second one. So, this distance has to be which one the second anti node which is 3 lambda by 4 and we are very correct because see that this is half the wavelength and then this is one fourth. So, which means we are on a correct way and then the second anti node sorry second node sorry the third one I am sorry this is at the complete wavelength lambda right from the origin and of course, you may keep on going ahead you will get all these values right. So, this is it okay. and I hope that you have understood the conditions of the nodes and anti nodes right and if you have any doubts please do comment 
in the comment section thank you